Hollis Taylor was an accomplished violinist, a former Oregon state fiddle champion with an established career and perfect pitch, when one day something quite unexpected happened. She heard a pied butcher bird. It was on my first trip to Australia in 2001, and I was in WA on a remote sheep station, just wandering about when all of a sudden I heard a jazz flutist in a tree. It's the only way I can describe it. And then uh, there was an answer and then another answer. I was in the middle of a trio of birds singing together, and I had no idea birds sang in trios. It was really an epiphany for me. As a researcher, most recently at Macquarie University, Dr. Taylor has been studying, recording and transcribing Pied Butcher Bird songs for 12 years. Taylor produces what she calls recompositions, musical arrangements that mimic and complement Pied Butcher Bird songs. Now, we'll come back to the music in a minute, but let me just get a pied butcher bird in your mind. The pied butcher bird is native to Australia. They're black and white, and they look a little bit like a magpie, but they don't sound like a magpie. This? That's a magpie. Whereas this? That's a pied butcher bird. They're smaller than a magpie. They've got short feet, um, and you don't see them. So you don't see them on the ground very much. You don't really see them. You hear them, because they the, the short feet allow them to maneuver into bushes and rob other birds' nests. Uh, it's always a shocking thing to witness, and a very difficult thing to witness. They're not vegetarians. The pot butcher bird gets their name not just from robbing the nests and but from then hanging the extra food up on a twig and a branch, so they sort of run a butcher shop. To create one of her recompositions, Taylor records pied butcher birds and transcribes their song into musical notation. She also makes a phrase-by-phrase sonogram, a visual representation of the sound. Her compositions combine musical instruments with field recordings, such as other bird songs, insects, or her fellow campers. I call them recompositions because I like to give most of the credit to the pod butcher birds and because it's not my goal to really improve on their songs. The whole point for me has been, could I take a transcription and could I just assign it to a tuba or a flute or a cello and pretty much play it the way that uh, the birds sang it and would it still be music? This question... Is birdsong music has become a central theme of Dr. Taylor's research. And after many years of study, she's convinced the answer is yes. You'll read that birdsong is not music because it's hardwired. And that is just erroneous. It's, it's not even an, a point that can be argued. It's just some people don't realise that songbirds learn their songs. So when you say they learn their songs, you know, you mean that they're not automatons, they're not hardwired to make that noise they are consciously creatively expressing themselves there yes they've they've had to learn their song from their parents or from some other in the case of pied butcher birds they're, they're learning their songs from other pied butcher birds and they um in the case of pied butcher birds they are what they call open-ended learners so they continue to learn even in adulthood and they're quite inventive so songbirds learn their songs mm-hmm. and, and the, the list of, of the other ones. And songbirds make up about half of the 10,000 bird species. Wow. So all of those, even if it's a simple song, if, if they're called a songbird, it's because they've had to learn it. They aren't born with the capacity. And if they don't hear it from their parents or, or other conspecifics other of the same species, they won't um, either won't produce it or won't produce it in a really species ordinary way. Mm-hmm. So it's not nature or nurture, it's both. So another argument people have for why birdsong is not music is because birdsong is purely functional. 
And again, this is displaying ignorance of both birdsong and human music, I believe, because human music certainly is functional. It's not just pure enjoyment, and of course, pure enjoyment is still a function in any case. So I, I think there's just, no... Just before you go on, what do you mean by functional? You know, just explain what okay. you mean there. What functions does it does it serve? The functions that birdsong is assumed to serve are territorial defense and mate attraction. And these are well proven in a few species. And there's no reason to not think that this could extend to many or all species. I believe that in species like highly sophisticated, complex songs like the Pied Butcher Bird, that you cannot explain all of that through functionality. And, and I don't think that aesthetics and function are mutually exclusive. They're mutually enhancive. You said human music can serve a function as well. What, what do you mean? Like, what's an example there? Well, we affirm our group and our taste uh, through music, and music accompanies all sorts of activities, funerals, weddings, birthdays, trying to get your homework done, jogging, you know, it, it certainly has many, many functions. And then there's the argument that birdsong is insufficiently complex to be called music. Certainly a lot of human music is simple, formulaic, repetitive, and is not complex in harmony or contrapuntal um, effects. So there's plenty of human music that is simple. And then we look at some species like the brown thrasher, who's got thousands of phrases. They think they're improvised, meaning that they can't find an order, a, a logical or predictable order that they're delivered in. And there's many other species like that. Lastly, I asked Hollis Taylor, why does this matter? Why study this for 12 years? She answered by quoting a famous American scientist called Stephen Jay Gould. Well, as Stephen Jay Gould said, we will not fight to save what we do not love. And if we don't know the amazing things that animals, non-human animals, are accomplishing, we'll feel less like trying to save them. And so in this time of extinctions and climate change, and loss of biodiversity is just one small bit that I can do. <laughs> <laughs>